Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be starting a brand new series on this channel called Incredibly Weird Toys. Going through all sorts of odd toys from the 80s, 90s, and even some you can find today. But in the first few episodes we will be covering exclusively 80s toys. Some 80s toys are very questionable. Was the creator of the toy or toy line on acid at the time? Were they going through a bad divorce? Did their aunt marry a horse and it ruined the whole family dynamic growing up? We'll never know! But what I do know is that some of these toys are pretty weird. We only have a few spots and I plan on doing a few of these videos. So if you can think of another super weird 80s toy, let me know in the comments down below. Number 6. Manglores Squash them, take them apart, they'll return almost like new to their original forms. First released in 1984 by the Ideal Toy Company who brought us such classics as Battling Tops and the Rubik's Cube, the first wave of Manglores consisted of Manglord, the Manglore Mountain Playset, the Manglosaurus, and Manglodactyl. Next wave consisted of Manglodemon, Manglizard, and Manglodragon, who came in giant plastic eggs. I feel a little silly because I actually didn't know that demons came from eggs. You can crack open a Manglore. The Manglores, Manglo Demon, Manglo Dragon, and Manglizard. The line was sold overseas under the name Volcalores, which may be a little more familiar to a few of you. So the whole concept and gimmick of this line was that these figures were highly flexible, sticky, squishy figures which were made out of a miracle material called sorbethane. The commercials claimed that children could not only squish and stretch the heck out of these figures, they could also rip them apart and return their figures to almost like new, hence mangled manglores. Kids love to destroy their toys, and here was a toy that was essentially telling you to do it. The disappointment was real when children realized it was nearly impossible for them to reattach their ripped off body parts or create mangled abominations between their various figures as advertised. The parts would simply not hold together and the children were left with a bunch of ripped up pieces and tears. These toys were so bad that a consumer's union children's publication called Penny Power, who took a look at the safety, quality, and value of toys for their price, actually took action against the ideal toy company due to the fact that this line could not live up to its advertising claims, placing it at the number one spot on their naughty list. Number 5. Zany Zappers Flash on zany zappers, glasses that you wear Soaring to popularity in the early 80s, Zany Zappers by Lakeside was nothing more than a pair of plastic sunglasses with a light emitting diode in the middle of each lens, totally obstructing your vision. Powered by a 9 volt battery on one end of a wire which could be concealed in your pocket, the lights could be flashed to shock anybody that didn't already notice the giant wire attached to your glasses or the giant diode where your eyes should be. Man, look how much fun they're having though. Look, instant dance party, instant instant chicks. It was also advertised that you could engage in light fights with your friends, which sounds like something that parents absolutely would love, having their kids walk aimlessly around trying to find their friend and shoot light beams in what little vision they have left to blind them even more. Of course, the novelty wore off after a few seconds, but although, you know, completely useless for everyday wear, they would make a great addition to a Star Wars Jawa costume. But don't ask me how fun they were. Ask this guy in Blondie's 1981 Rapture music video. Number 4. Breath Blasters with a lift. Breath Blaster makes a horrible stink when you squeeze it. Released in 1986 by Axlon and riding the kids toy gross out trend, I guess the company figured that smells had not been utilized yet and voila! Breath Blasters. Squeeze their squishy bodies and out comes a puff of absolutely vile air, with scents ranging from vomit, garbage, and dead fish, featuring characters like George Garbage Mouth, Mackerel Mouth, Miss Morning Breath, Dog Breath, Dead Breath, and Victor Vomit, you're bound to find that perfect scent that fits you. On Victor Vomit's package, it reads, if he breathes on you, you'll want to vomit too. 
Ooh. The whole point of these abominations were for kids to spray the vile smelling fumes onto their friends and little sisters. Apparently, some of these smelled so vile that it actually made children vomit. But in 1989, Breath Blasters was in a stink. Their packaging claimed that the toys were non-toxic, but it was found that their grotesque fumes were indeed toxic and dangerous. Stopping all production and banning the toy line. Number 3. Pillow People Where kids never feel alone, they're in happy pillow valley. Hey kids, do you want to do more with your pillow than just sleep on it? No? Well, too bad. It's Pillow People. The Pillow People were terrifyingly large square-headed plush dolls with stuffed arms and legs, first released by Springs Industries in 1986. There's a good chance you had one of these or knew someone with one growing up, as it was one of the most successful plush toy lines ever. Featuring such characters as Mr. Thunderclap, Bigfoot Steps, Rocky Balboa, I mean Pillow Fighter, Rockabye Baby, and Sweet Dreams, additional animals were also added like cats and dogs. I'm Drowsy Dog. I'm Hunter Bear. I'm Little Sleeper. <laughs> Little Bo Sleep's my name. I'm Dino Snooze. You could find these SpongeBob SquarePants faces in the home furnishings aisle rather than the toy aisle, as Spring Industries was a home furnishings distributor. Matching bed sheets with your favorite character could also be purchased. Used as a sort of pacifier to lull children to sleep with a sense of comfort in the darkness at bedtime, I'm wondering if these things actually had the opposite effect, causing children to dream of nightmarish dancing pagan rituals in the forest. As the popular Pillows soared to fame in 1988, the animated Christmas special Pillow People Save Christmas aired and continued to air regularly for about a decade during the holidays. You're in Pillow Valley. <laughs> And I'm Pillow Fighter, featherweight champion of the world. Following the adventures of the Pillow People, who attempt to thwart an evil nightmare witch's plans to ruin the holidays in North Pillow Valley. But what goes up must come down. In the early 90s, the Pillow People were smothered due to a new line of pillows called Pillow Stars, featuring popular licensed characters such as the California Raisins, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Disney characters, and much more. Number 2. Mr. Pop. It's a race to make a face when you play Mr. Pop. Originally released in 1980 by Milton Bradley, we will take a look at the many faces of Mr. Pop, who was also known around the world as Mr. Funny Face and Mr. Richter. Mr. Pop was a combination of Pop Goes Perfection and Mr. Potato Head. You know it's true, Mr. Potato Head. I made you. Where a player sets the timer and flips over a card which illustrates a completed face and the player must place the correct facial pieces into the slots on Mr. Pops's head to match the illustration on the card. But if time runs out before the player finishes, the head pops up, scattering all of Mr. Pops's facial pieces onto the table, leaving him faceless. You said I could be your apprentice. You said you'd teach me how to be a faceless man. Forget about Jack and Hagar, Mr. Pop can teach you all there is to know about becoming a faceless man. If you're wondering, is Mr. Pop still around? Was his face too terrifying for little kids? Nah, -uh. Mr. Pop has stood the test of time, making comebacks in 2006, 2015, and 2018. And number one, the E.T. Finger Light. <laughs> They want to touch you. Dubbed as one of the worst toys to ever be made, the E.T. Finger Light released in 1982 by Knickerbocker doesn't leave much to the imagination. Really, there's no thinking involved. It clearly looks like a wrinkly dick. I understand this toy represents a very iconic scene from Steven Spielberg's movie where E.T., the friendly alien who is accidentally left on Earth, is helped by a boy to escape Earth and return to his home planet. But this seems more like something you would find in a fetish shop than a children's toy aisle. <laughs> John, we need you to sculpt a long E.T. finger. Okay, boss. What was going through the sculptor's head when he was sculpting this? He must have been laughing his head off. It's a dingling. It looks like a dingling. You can't get anywhere around it. And did they really have to make it a fleshy color? I mean, E.T. is nowhere even near that color to begin with. Slip E.T. finger over your index finger. Tip of finger should touch base of battery. 
I kind of feel like I'm reading condom instructions here. Do not leave light on for long periods of time. Light is designed for intermittent use. <laughs> no, I was gonna use it as my primary lighting source in my house. Eventually this finger light was recalled and switched instead to a whole hand version down the road. If you received the ET Atari game and the finger light for Christmas, you may have been trying to finger out if your parents really loved you or not. So there you have it, six incredibly weird 80s toys. I hope you all enjoyed this list and in the comments down below, please let me know if you had any of these toys featured today. And do you have any other weird toy nominations for future episodes? So thank you all so much for watching and stay legendary. Bye.